Hi guys, my name's Joe Quick and this is a JQ review walkthrough. Today we're playing Chronique de Salancieux. As of today's date, March 2024, only a few people have completed this game, which isn't unsurprising given its release date, the 29th of January. However, it's also really, really hard. But it's definitely worth playing because it has such a beautiful story and some unique game features. It's also worth mentioning that the game does have quite a few issues at the moment and the team are working hard to resolve them. They are also making tweaks to the game to make solving the puzzles that little bit easier, so you may see some differences between my walkthrough and your version of the game. If you want to complete this game without any help, here are my top tips. Talk to everyone, absolutely everyone. This unlocks conversation topics important to the investigation and then talk to them again. You can tell if there's something new to talk about by a little red dot on the topic stamp. Where you see musical notes, hit record on your recorder. A connection, generally a contradiction, is always between a document in your inventory and a piece of dialogue. So instead of focusing on the dialogue, try to focus on what the document might be hinting at. Not every item will have a contradiction and based on my playthrough, they will rarely have more than one. A hypothesis will more than likely use the keys, or verbs, from that chapter. The journal entries will point you in the right direction regarding what the hypothesis is about. I will continue to give tips throughout this walkthrough to try and help guide you instead of handing you the answer straight away, but I'm going to trim over all the dialogue otherwise this will be a 5 hour video. I recommend you enjoy the game at your leisure and come here when you're stuck. If you're struggling with the concept of connections and hypothesis, here is a little example from the prologue. The game does offer tutorials, but it's not always clear where you need to click. You can exit the tutorial by holding down the right mouse button. So, connections. You can select a character from the top right and then select a topic from the left to see their thoughts on the subject. The dial on the bottom right lets you switch between documents, testimonies and leads. If you find a contradiction between the texts, you can hold down the left mouse button to pin the topic and hold it down again to connect the two. Eugene will comment if it is a relevant connection or not. To create a hypothesis, click on the padlock icon in the leads window. You can pick two topics from the top of the screen and put them in the slots next to the padlock. Select one of the keys or verbs on the side and bring them to the keyhole. Finally, hold down the left mouse button to turn the lock. If successful, the padlock will open and Eugene will comment on the case. Now let's get into the details. You play as Eugene Forty. Your mother has just passed away and so you head to Bordeaux to live with your uncle. The game starts with your first inventory item. A letter from your mother. Tap the X to close the letter and talk to the man in the dark suit by simply clicking on the gold icon. The first real puzzle is following this guy's directions. All you need to do is step out of the station and go diagonally across the street. You can zoom out with the plus minus keys or the mouse scroll to get a better view of the scene. If you see Le Pays de Gaulle, you are in the right place and there is only one building you can enter here. If you click on the first door, it isn't entirely apparent why, but we seem to be peeking through the keyhole. 
click the mouse three times to knock and it should trigger some dialogue. After that, head upstairs to trigger a nice cutscene and some more dialogue, where we are properly introduced to Madame Solange, the manager of Le Pays de Gaulle, and Inspector Yves. Once the dialogue has finished, head outside. Back to the square. And to the bottom left of the screen. This should place you at the police station. Head inside and talk to the officer at the desk. you will receive a police report. Some more dialogue and a cut scene later, you find yourself next to your uncle's cell. We then receive a tutorial on how to make a connection, although it's a bit glitchy, so I recommend holding down the right mouse button to skip it and revisit the start of this video for a reminder. Talk to your uncle again. Now let's make our first connection. If we take a look at the police report, we can see that the first paragraph says the altercation took place in front of Pay de Gaulle. But Uncle Flavio said something different. He said he met him in the market. The two facts don't match, so let's connect the two. The inspector will then enter and hand you an information sheet on Hervé that tells us he is a henchman for Jojo Mandalina. And soon after, there's another tutorial on how to make a hypothesis. We can select two topics from the top and an action verb from the selection of keys. Finish talking to the inspector and then we'll make our first hypothesis.
We know from the information sheet on Hervé that he is Jojo's henchman. He was hanging around Le Pay de Girl and got into an altercation with Flavio. Madame Solange manages the Pay de Girl. If we put these elements together with our limited selection of verbs, we can assume Hervé was there to threaten Madame Solange. Some more dialogue. Head back to Pays de Gaulle and head upstairs to the first floor. A question mark should appear next to the first door. Click on that to start another dialogue with Madame Solange. She gets quite defensive and will refuse to talk to us anymore. We need to make two more hypotheses before we can confront her. A short cutscene and the inspector gives you a newspaper. Hervé has been found dead. The investigator suggests we talk to some old timers in the square to learn more about the history of Pay de Girl and Madame Solange. So head out into the square and you'll notice a few new, older faces. Talk to each of them. You'll learn about a young boy that used to be on the streets named Renault. You may experience a small issue here where you can no longer select an icon. There's an easy way to fix this if you do. Press the escape key and leave the game to the main menu. Click resume and you will enter back to the scene. The game automatically saves after every interaction so you shouldn't have lost any progress. So once that's done you can head back to the police station and ask the inspector about Renault. Head to the cell and as you do, take a look at the papers the officer has left on the chair. Pick up the Paris Flash magazine. Talk to Uncle Flavio about Jojo's drugs and Renault. Go back to Le Pays de Gaulle. You can now enter the first room on the left when you enter. Check out the jackets on the right. You can hover your hand over the pocket, click the mouse button and dip in the pocket to find a key. Which jacket it will be in appears to be random and there is nothing else to be found in the other jackets. When you see some musical notes, you have the opportunity to record something. You'll receive a tutorial, but again, I recommend holding the right mouse button down to skip this. Open the inventory window and select the recorder at the bottom. Tap the record button and Eugene will hold out his microphone to highlight he is recording something. You'll need to stand in the right place. You'll know you're there when the screen starts to zoom in. And once it's recorded, the recorder should open with a new song listed on the right. If you don't speak French, I dreamt of a flower translates to J'ai rêvé d'une fleur. You can then exit the room and head to the double doors at the end of the hall. Look at the documents on the left and pick up the lesson notes. You'll notice a conversation written between two of the girls on the back. We can make a connection here. Madame Solange wants the girls to have an education so that they can connect better with their clients. But Victor has been teaching them all sorts and this is upsetting the clients. 
connect the sentence saying, we come here to be listened to, with Madame Solange's comment on lessons to help them forget. Exit out of that and go talk to Victor. Then, when that's done, head downstairs to the kitchen. Talk to the Admiral. And you will then notice a document on the table. Another bug, so back to the main menu and resume the game. We'll pick up a flyer for the Golden Anchor Bar. Leave the kitchen and go all the way upstairs to the end room, marked with the feet icon. This is Blanche's room. Talk to her about everything. And then if you inspect her drawer, you can shuffle through the papers and pick up the share certificate addressed to Bonnet Veronique. If you are paying attention to Blanche, you'll know that her real name is Veronique. Head onto the street and you'll notice a new icon in front of the shop window. Click on it to enter the shop and then inspect the cabinet. It's empty. Or is it? Every good detective knows not to take things at face value. Feel around and see if you can find anything. If you hold the left panel and slide it to the side, it will reveal a package. Go back into the square and talk to the bench outside Le Bleu. There was an older gentleman here earlier, but he's now sitting comfortably on one of the building roofs. Like I said before, this game is a bit buggy. After talking to him, you will receive the testimony of the elderly citizens. Octave remembers two orphan children. Solange and Renault. So we discover that Madame Solange had a brother. Edmund recalls a young boy called Renault, who used to sing J'arrive d'une fleur. This song keeps making an appearance, and I'm sure Inspector Yves mentioned it earlier. Let's make another connection. Yves said that Jojo Mandalina used to whistle J'arrive d'une fleur. Connect the two sentences that comment on the song and you'll discover that Renault is Jojo Mandalina. If you head to the top exit of the square, you'll find yourself running circles around the docks. We need to make another connection.
Uncle Flavio told us that Jojo's headquarters were on the docks, but he couldn't remember the name of the place. The Admiral told us he used to go to a bar on the docks, and we picked up a flyer for the Golden Anchor. Connect the Golden Anchor to Uncle Flavio's statement regarding the name to link the two. When you next go north out of the square, you will find yourself at the Golden Anchor Bar. Talk to the bartender, but he will deny knowing Jojo. And to stay in the bar, you will have to know a regular. Who else do we know? Well, as we just discovered, Jojo is in fact Renault. You can tell the bartender you know Renault, but he is still not convinced. How can you persuade the bartender you know Renault? If you were good friends, you might have similar tastes in music perhaps even whistle the same song. Let's get past this bug and I'll tell you the solution. Open up the recorder and play I Dreamt of a Flower. That's enough to prove that you're clearly good friends with Jojo. After that, you will receive the bartender's testimony. Do one final round of talking to everybody and we should be nearing the end of this chapter. Let's revisit our leads. We learnt that Jojo is in fact Renault, Madame Solange's brother. He deals drugs at the Golden Anchor and has regular appointments with an old lady at the bar. Hervé, Jojo's henchman, came to Le Pays de Gaulle to threaten Madame Solange. The antique store is meant to keep Le Pays de Gaulle open. But Yves thinks Madame Solange may be heading towards bankruptcy. We discovered each of the girls has received a stock portfolio and there were drugs in the cabinet of the store. Blanche and Yves seem to have a secret relationship and she has been feeling sick lately. And with that, we can make the last two hypotheses. We can assume that Jojo's drugs are financing Le Pays de Gaulle. Use the topic Jojo's drugs with the finance key and the topic Pay de Gaulle. Madame Solange may be facing bankruptcy and has given the girls stock shares. Is she going to sell the shop? Connect Madame Solange with the liquidate key and pay the girl. If you're happy you've explored all this chapter has to offer, then turn that door handle. This is a point of no return. You will confront Madame Solange and use the resources you have gathered to prove your case. Solange makes her statement, and you have to prove she's lying. You have two attempts as indicated in the bottom left, and if you are unsuccessful, the detective will step in to cover you. This has no impact on the story or gameplay, with the exception of a grade provided by the detective at the end. She says she hasn't seen her brother since they were children but the bartender said that Renault meets a woman every Thursday. Go to the bartender's statement and connect the lines, that's the last I saw of him, with 
his first day rendezvous with an older woman. She will explain some of the history and you are faced with another contradiction. Madame Solange stated she made a life of her own and doesn't need her brother's help. Yet we found drugs in the antique store. Connect, I've made a life of my own with the bag of drugs. Solange suggests that someone else has planted the drugs there. We know from the conversations that both Flavio and Blanche have had bad experiences with drugs and don't want anything to do with them. Connect Flavio's innocence with his statement on Jojo's drugs. I don't touch the stuff anymore. And connect Blanche's innocence with her statement of a nasty addiction. Solange then states that everything has gone downhill because the wealthy clients have disappeared. But if we take a look at Uncle Flavio's statement about Le Pays de Gaulle, he said it was a mess before the war. Connect the two. She admits it, but where will her girls go if it closes down? Well, they have the stock shares. Connect the shares of 70 francs with where do my girls go? But that's meant for the future. She's not going to retire anytime soon, right? Well, we know she's been feeling sick, throwing up. She's probably going to die. Or, perhaps she's pregnant. Can we find a comment suggesting Blanche is pregnant? Uncle Flavio says she's going to spew in the lab every 15 minutes. Nothing says I'm pregnant better than morning sickness. Connect Flavio's comment with Solange's statement, she's still got a long way to go. And our next question, who could be the father? Blanche and Yves have been spending a lot of time together secretly. Put Yves's photo in the slot. Finally, we need to determine why Solange can't close the business. The answer is Jojo Mandolina's silent partner, the Corsican but we don't have them as a topic, so we won't be able to solve this one. I'm not sure who you need to talk to in order to get that one, but if you find out, do let us know. This will trigger a lot of dialogue and some cutscenes rounding up the end of this chapter. During the cutscene, we are subtly introduced to another character. Remember that face, because she'll appear again later. We start part two of the story back in the square, five years after Eugene arrived in Bordeaux. Let's visit Le Pays de Gaulle and see what has changed. If you step into the first door on the left, we're introduced to Blanche's daughter. 
and learn that Eugene now has his own office as part of this little detective agency. Head all the way upstairs and enter the first door where you can have a proper catch up with Yves. He'll tell you that Victor has been looking for you, so leave the building and head north off the square. Go into this building and enter the first door on the right and you'll meet Victor. Victor tells us that he wants us to undertake an investigation on his past for the sake of his daughter, Catherine. Go upstairs and enter the second room on the first floor. If you look in the drawer, you will find a patient sheet telling us that Victor had an accident and was in hospital for a few days. Continue to the top floor and investigate the first door. This is Catherine's room, but she doesn't want to talk to us. Head back downstairs and through the back door into the garden. Talk to Victor about everything. This gives us enough information to make a hypothesis. Catherine is worried about Victor's accident. Put Catherine, the worry key, and Victor's accident into the lock and we will then be able to confront Catherine. Catherine is frustrated that her father is so secretive and asks how we could possibly understand. How could we possibly know what it's like having a distant relationship with your father? Well, Eugene has the same problem. We can reference the letter from his mum. I think there are multiple solutions here, but I just linked the comment, you and your father, with how could you understand any of that? A bit of chatting later and we're outside the house and Catherine has joined us on our journey. Head to the top right of the screen and we'll be at the university. Enter the building and go to the large door on the left. Talk to the guy in the leather jacket he will tell you about a forger in the university. Exit the room and head upstairs and to the left. Enter the first room and we'll meet Bernard, the dean of the university and an old friend of Victor's. He says to enter Victor's office we'll need to speak to the administration office and get a copy of the key. So head to the door at the end of the hallway and speak to the lady at the desk. The lady will tell you only the Dean can get key copies. So head back to Bernard's office. Some more dialogue. And then head across to the other side of the stairs and enter the room at the end of the hall. 
examine the drawer and pick up the document, at which point you will be interrupted by another professor and old friend of Catherine's, Martin. He'll add a bit more context to Victor's accident and then leave the room. Follow him to the room next door and discuss all the topics available. He'll give us permission to explore the antiques wing, so let's head there next. Downstairs and to the door on the bottom right of the screen. We'll meet the head of security who drops a few hints about students playing pranks. And another glitch in the game. Just imagine we're still in the antiques room. Go to the door on the top right of the main hall and you can talk to Bernard in the kitchen. Once you've spoken to him, leave the university and head south to the square. Go back to Le Père de Gaulle and enter the double doors at the end of the hallway. Talk to Solange about everything you know and then head back to the university. Solange would have told you about a person she helped hide during the war, hypotenuse. Go and speak to Martin in the teacher's lounge about this topic and he will point you towards a book author, Nicholas Barben. Head down the stairs and enter the big door in the middle. You can use the library computer to search for Barben and see he wrote a book titled 2560 Years of Geometry. You will also want to speak to this guy for another hint on the forger. Venture back to Victor's apartment and go upstairs to the loft room. Here you'll see a safe. We need to enter a combination and there's a lot of numbers thrown at you in this chapter, but hopefully you've figured it out now. 2,000, 500, 6 and 0, years of geometry, and we can open the safe. Pick up the envelope inside. It mentions Aristide, Bernard, his Lieutenant Ston, and the Archean. What do all these mean? Do one final round of talking to everybody and head back to the antiquity wing. At the far end of the room there is a grate which you can open by holding down on the screws. Place the package in the grate. If you haven't got the package you must have missed talking to someone. Then. You need a keen eye to solve this next puzzle. The head of security mentions some kids playing with a leaf on the statue. Wander near the soldier with a shield and you should just see an icon pop up. If you click on it, then there's your leaf. But what do we do with it? 
Martin had previously made a comment about the forger. Freedom points to four o'clock, tyranny to eight. So if we point our leaf at four o'clock for freedom, hopefully that will give us the desired result. Now when you leave, this should trigger a cutscene. If it doesn't, you may have missed something else important, or possibly your leaf wasn't pointing to four, so give it another try. The lights go out and Bernard enters the room. Follow Bernard through the blue door. Left. And then right. To another door and another cutscene. That's it. Bernard locks himself away. Head back into the university and up the stairs towards Bernard's office. Just outside, you can talk to his wife and you will receive a testimony of her affairs. She tells us Bernard's hardly ever home and she thinks he's having an affair. Head back down to the antiquity wing. Through the blue door and back to Bernard's hideout. Inspect the bin bags to find a key and let yourself into the room. Once inside, inspect the drawer, where you will discover a passport in the name of Victor Duslovan. Inspect the clippings on the wall to discover Bernard's interest in the trial of Vogel. Look at the painting on the wall. That's not his wife. Finally, check out the bottles on the shelf. Bernard's been using them for target practice. Leave the university and head south across the square to the police station. Speak to the man behind the desk who will explain you don't have permission to visit Vogel. We need someone with connections to help us out. Head back to Le Pays de Gaulle and upstairs to see Yves. He's still got contact in the force. Some brief dialogue later, you'll find yourself next to Vogel's cell. Talk to him about all your topics. Now, let's make some connections. Martin stated that Bernard always said you have to live in the moment, not in the past. Yet we have this invitation to a reunion. Connect the two. The letter is also addressed to Ston, so we probably shouldn't be able to make that connection just yet. At this stage, you should also be able to connect Martin's comment on the forger using the archaeology wing, the Archean, with the letter from Hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. 
Solange had quoted that Lucette Gransomand had three beauty spots, so you can connect that with the photo from Bernard's Den. What about this letter? Everything is arranged with Aristide to take care of Bernard. Ston is his lieutenant. So Bernard, referenced in this letter, is actually Francois Grandsomand, and Ston killed them, not Vogel. But who is Ston? Vogel states he suspected one of Grandsomand's lieutenants was a forger. Connect this with the letter to discover that our forger, Bernard, is in fact Ston. We still haven't discovered all the facts. Bernard, or Ston, has mentioned this quiet hero, Le Fibur, in both the newspaper clipping and in his reunion invitation. There are also details around Victor's accident to be determined. So there are still plenty of connections to be made. If you found something I didn't, please drop it in the comments. But let's take a look at what we know. Victor wants Eugene to investigate his past and recently had an accident at the university. Bernard is running a forgery workshop out of the archaeology wing. The banknote we used for the dead drop reappeared in a donation box. Bernard's wife says he's out all night. He had a picture of Lucette Gransomand and Bernard, otherwise known as Ston, killed the Gransomands. Aristide is going to testify at Vogel's trial, and Bernard has been practicing shooting in his workshop. We found Hypotenuse's document in his safe detailing the execution. Bernard has been very secretive about Victor and has been forging passports, including Victor's. That's enough to make our hypotheses. For some reason, Bernard is trying to falsify Victor's past. Use Bernard with the falsify key and Victor. Aristide is going to testify at Vogel's testimony, and Bernard wants to stop him. Use Bernard with the kill key and Aristide. Now we can open the door. Again, this is the point of no return, so if you think there is anything left to discover, don't click yes. Otherwise, hit that button and let the chaos unfold. Bernard says the forgeries were a side job and he hasn't been to the hideaway for months, but his wife stated that he's always busy and out all night. I was fairly certain that the connection was coming home late with I've not been to the hideaway for months, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Either way, it should be something between the wife's testimony and the hideaway. Maybe this comment, I'm past the age, I can stay up all night with coming home late. Again, let me know in the comments if you've got that one right. Then Bernard tells us he got back into the forgery business because it pays well but the note that we used in the dead drop appeared in the charity box the following morning. You can be forgiven if you missed this as there is just a short bit of dialogue to say they'll use that note. Bernard then defends himself, saying it keeps him busy, but he has no interest in the past and will leave it all behind. 
However, we found the picture of Lucette Grandsomand in his hideout. Connect the picture of Lucette with the comment, I've left all these old stories behind. Bernard claims he had a chance to help the resistance, but there was little risk and he only had the occasional request for false papers. But we know that Bernard, or Ston, was Grandsomand's lieutenant so he must have played a bigger role. Connect the letter with the statement about contact with the outside world. He then starts to crack. He admits everything and tells us he wants some recognition for his efforts. Although Martin had stated that he avoids the limelight and doesn't mention his past as a member of the resistance. Connect Martin's statement with Bernard's comment that he has earned the rewards. Bernard agrees. He's not interested in the medals, but he just wants to be recognized. When we spoke to Solange about Bernard, she said he chose to keep all of it hidden, which contradicts his desire to be recognized. Connect the two. Bernard then tells us the whole backstory. He had fled Bordeaux and when he returned, someone had left him a message. Someone who knew the truth about his past and a big secret. Who was the message from? The British agent, Aristide. As we deduced earlier, Bernard plans to kill him, but who can prevent him from doing so? Well, no one really, but Lucette, being the kind, understanding woman that she was, wouldn't want him to. Bernard gets upset and states that Lucette would want him to avenge everybody that got killed. But after speaking to Vogel, we know that Lucette had accepted her fate and was always ready to forgive. Connect Vogel's comment, she was a Catholic, with Bernard's, Lucette would want me to avenge them. Bernard said he isn't as forgiving and asks who he could possibly forgive. Well, Bernard, you need to forgive yourself. That rounds up this chapter and as a parting gift, Bernard gives us a bottle of red wine. A few cutscenes later and we're in the rack, still hunting down the truth about Victor's past. When you get off the train, head around the building to the left. Across the street, you'll notice there is a cafe open, so venture in there and after a bit of text, it will trigger another cutscene. We meet Victor's female friend from the end of chapter one and need to chase her through the streets. Leave the building and head to the closest exit just north of the cafe. Follow Catherine into the park and across the courtyard into this building. Head past the barrels and through the corridor to trigger more text, more cutscenes and a lot more text. Catherine has been reunited with her mother and sister, and there is some confusion as to whether her father is called Victor or Henry. The following morning, head into the church and round to the priest quarters on the left. A short introduction and a few hints which can't be revisited. Catherine's mum says she dyed her hair blonde and the priest says Andre, Catherine's father-in-law, keeps himself locked away except for coming to church on a Sunday.
After that, we find ourselves back at the brewery. Head inside, past the barrels, through the corridor, and up the stairs to Andre's office. Andre says he's really busy and won't have time to talk. Then we find ourselves in town and caught up with our stalker friend. Head north and interact with the stranger. He explains there are lots of mysteries around Catherine and the family. Back at the brewery, head outside your room and across the hallway to see Catherine. She's over the moon that she's been reunited with her mother, but Eugene thinks something is amiss. We wake up the next day ready to investigate. Head across the hallway to Catherine's room and pick up the papers on her bed. It's a share for the Finfana Brewery. Leave the room and walk into this wardrobe. It's a secret entrance to the loft room. Go through the drawers here and you should find a letter from Henry to his mother, explaining that he had a plan with his Russian friend and Andre knew all the details. Dated May 45, so just after the war had finished. The other document is a police report telling us that Henry was causing a disturbance at the cafe, singing the International a communist anthem. Leave the loft and head downstairs. Enter the first door to your left. You'll notice a pot with a key on the set of drawers. Go pick up the key. Leave this room and head across to the right. Enter the room with the white door. There's a book on the table. Pick it up. It's a family photo album with a number of pictures from around the war. Leave the room and take a look at the picture on the wall. Nothing too exciting, but you can turn it around without it falling off the wall. Hover your cursor near the bottom of the screen and it should scroll down to reveal a letter. Pick it up. It's a letter to Henry from a Mrs. Geoffrey Mormon, stating she has found a notebook of one of the German officers. The notebook claims Henry was given double rations suspiciously around the same time two soldiers were killed during an escape attempt. Head downstairs and exit the building through the double doors to the south. Once outside, walk past the park and back into the cafe. There's another police report on the side, stating that Father Hubert was in a drunken fight over a song he loved on the jukebox. A quick catch up with Vives, and then we'll take a look at that jukebox. Try and play the song with a red cross on it, and the bartender will tell you it's forbidden. He asks who would want to listen to it anyway. I've got an idea who, but we haven't got any options at the moment. Leave the bar and head up the road. Talk to the man at the market stall. It's Gabriel Tremont, mayor of the town and old friend of Henry and Bernard's.
talk to him about everything and then head to the exit behind the statue. Walk down the street and enter the building with the green doors. Talk to our stalker friend, whose name is Ramune, and get all the gossip on the town. Leave the building and head north across the bridge. You should find yourself back outside the church. Go inside and across to the priest quarters. Talk to the priest about everything and leave again. Head east past the little girl and you'll find Catherine and her mother Marie in the garden by the summer house. Talk to them about everything. Once you're done, take the other exit and you should be outside the brewery. Talk to the brewery staff outside. Head into the building, past the barrels, through the corridor, and we'll bump into Simone. Talk to her about everything. After chatting to Simone, you'll notice that there is a document under the stairs to the office. Pick it up. It's the minutes of a court trial against a Mr. Harrock it details that Andre had been seen with terrorists, or the resistance, and this had caused the Germans to interrogate his father, Jean. Jean admitted he knew and was proud of his son. Head over to the door on the bottom right. This gentleman explains that only shareholders can view the archives, but you picked up the shares statement in Catherine's room, so feel free to explore. Within these drawers, you should find a financial report, ultimately showing that the brewery has been making a loss since the 1950s. And another document to Mrs. Jean Finfana, dated 1945, from the brewery shareholders stating that they will have no choice but to sell their shares if Henry doesn't return. Leave the archives and be sure to speak to the two workers by the pumps. then head through the corridor. If you've spoken to all the brewery workers, then the loading bay should now have a few people loitering around. Speak to the three in the corner and you'll receive their testimony. They explain that Andre does a good job looking after the brewery and Henry isn't actually that good at making beer, considering he studied it. Head back outside and make your way back to the cafe. Go back to the jukebox and try to play the song marked with a cross again. Who would like to listen to the forbidden song? Someone who thought it was nostalgic and perhaps caused some trouble previously because of it. Father Hubert would like to listen to the song. The bartender gives us the okay, but we can't play it out loud. This puzzle had me going in circles for some time, but the solution is right in front of you. Unscrew the board on the jukebox. If you then select the recorder in the corner of the screen and hit the record button, you are offered an audio jack which you can put in the socket behind the panel. Flip the switch with a cross on it again and the song will record. You should now see the forbidden song in your playlist.
venture back to the church and enter the priest's quarters. From your inventory, select the recorder and play the forbidden song. This will trigger a comical little cutscene where both characters get drunk. What exactly was in that bottle of wine? And we received the testimony of Father Hubert. After the convent, he brought a girl back to the mansion and it seems Marie slapped Catherine during the flood. Let's make some connections. When talking about Henry's departure, Simone had said that on the day of the flood, she saw Catherine rubbing her cheek, saying, it hurts, daddy. Connect that with the father's statement of Marie slapping Catherine. Ramonet said that Father Hubert can be a bit of a drunk and he always wants to sing some nostalgic ballad. Connect this line with the police report stating Father Hubert didn't want to stop repeating the song. Simone commented on Jean's death. In August 44, the Germans raided the manor, searching everywhere, including the summer house, and they broke the windows with their rifle butts. But if we take a look at the photo book, there is a picture of the summer house with the windows broken, dated 1946. Someone has been tampering with the dates. Connect Simone's comment about the windows with the comment below the photo. If we take a look at what Gabriel Tremont said about Henry, he claimed that before the war, Henry was a royalist. But the police report we found said that Henry was singing the International. Connect the two. Head back to the pumps and it will trigger some dialogue with Simone. She explains that Catherine isn't her sister or Marie's daughter. It's putting a lot of stress on Marie, but only her uncle can make her see reason. Do one last round of talking to everyone and if you can, make more connections. But otherwise, let's look at what we know. Marie said that Victor, or Henry, wasn't Catherine's father and Ramonet also expressed doubts about the Finfana history. We found the copy of the Harak trial transcript, which explained the Germans came to Narak because of André. The brewery workers respect André as a director, and Simone admitted Catherine wasn't Marie's daughter. Henry became friends with a Russian soldier during his camp liberation and they had made some kind of arrangement as per the letters. Upon his return, it was as if Henry was a different man. The day of the flood, Catherine received a slap from Marie and Father Hubert refuses to talk about her childhood. The family photo album has also been backdated, so clearly they have something to hide. We've got enough to make our hypotheses. Henry Finfana, or more to the point, Henry's departure, was to protect Catherine. We know that Marie had slapped her and maybe there were other secrets putting her at risk. Use Henry's departure with the protect key and Catherine Finfana.
Andre had unintentionally brought the Germans to Narak when he was seen with the resistance as per the minutes from the trial of Harrock. Use Andre with the lead key and Harrock and Boulay. And when Henry returned from the camps, he seemed to be a different person. The Henry everybody knew no longer existed. Use camps with the kill key and Henry Finfana. Once again, it's the point of no return. Turn the door handle and click yes to continue. We confront Andre, but he refuses to listen, so we need to trap him somewhere. Who can help us force Andre to listen? He's always locked away in his office, except of course, on a Sunday, when he goes to church. Maybe Father Hubert can help. Reluctantly, the priest agrees, and with no other choice, Andre starts to tell his story. Andre believes it's his fault his father died, and thinks his father hated him for it. We know this isn't true. Connect Andre's statement, that day when a father cursed his son, with the minutes of the trial, where Harrock confirms Jean was proud of him. Andre is unconvinced and says his father died for nothing. If you look at Marie's comments about Jean's death, she explains when she visited him he was smiling because he was misdirecting the German forces. If we revisit Ramune's thoughts on Jean's death, he states, luckily the German reinforcements never made it, they must have been sent elsewhere. Connect this line with, my father died for nothing. Andre continues to tell the story, how he was captured and sent to the prisons. He was reunited with his brother Henry, but the impact of the war had taken its toll on his brother. One morning he woke up and his brother was dead, with two notes. We've already seen one which was addressed to Henry's mother, the other was addressed to Andre. It explains that Henry has decided to end his life after performing unforgivable acts in the camps and in the war, and that his Russian friend Victor would take his place, as he wanted to desert the communists to care for his daughter. Andre explains he thought Henry's spirit was improving, and that care and food would set him right, but you can see in Henry's letter that he had already decided his fate. Connect the line, constant care and food, with little brother, you must see where I'm going with this. Andre thinks he would have disappointed Henry and his father by not doing more and thinks he is failing the brewery. Is he failing the brewery? Is he doing a bad job? No, the workers love him. Find the testimony from the brewery staff and match the line. There's no denying it, we do pretty well with Mr. Andre. Against Andre's comment, what about the brewery? But Andre's not the only one at fault here. The whole town knows there was something suspicious about the Finfana history. So who is the main accomplice in keeping the lie? Well, I just said it. The whole of Narak. Everyone knew something was going on, but they all kept it to themselves. That seems like a perfect place to end the tutorial. There's one more puzzle to solve which requires you to play Catherine's lullaby on the recorder. 
and then the story should bring itself to a conclusion. In the epilogue you play as Catherine. Head over to Le Pays de Gaulle one final time and through the double doors to talk to Blanche and Solange. You'll then find yourself in the square, talking to Eugene and Martin about your next adventure. It's off to Russia. Maybe. If they do make another game, let's hope they make it easier. Anyway, I hope this helped you. Thanks for watching. If you made any connections I didn't, please drop them in the comments for other players. That's all for this walkthrough. Until next time, take care and keep gaming. Thank you.